You asked for it, I delivered. This is the ultimate comparison between interactive brokers and Momo Malaysia. And at the end of this video, you will know exactly which stock broker is the right one for you. Quick disclaimer up front, this video is not sponsored at all. So you will get the raw, unbiased and uncensored details. Not that I ever would. But anyways, there will be affiliate links down below in case you made up your mind to go with either of them. But if you don't feel like it, don't even bother about it. Anyways, without further ado, I will start with a brief background of both of these brokers, which will be very, very crucial for you to understand why they are same, same, but very different. You see, Interactive Brokers, or more accurately, TP and Co was founded in 1977, almost 47 years ago by Mr. Thomas Peter Fee, TP in short, who is also known as the pioneer of digital brokerage. And their company actually started with providing trading and clearing services for institutional clients like hedge funds, other stockbrokers, etc. etc. It was not until 1993 where the company was rebranded to Interactive Brokers and from which point they started serving retail clients i.e. smaller trader and investors like you and I. Whereas Mumu, on the other hand, under their parent company Futu Holdings Limited, is a retail first stock broker founded in 2012 by Mr. Leaf Lee, former employee number 18 of Tencent, the largest tech company in China right now. Yes, they are headquartered in the US and are actually publicly listed over there. But Futu or Mumu at its core is still mainly backed by its Shenzhen company in China. Long story short, the keyword here is institutional and retail first broker. An institutional first broker like Interactive Brokers has significantly larger business operations and they cater more towards complicated transactions over a vast range of financial services like trading, clearing, settlement, etc, etc. So they have an upper hand in terms of their product and also market coverage. And with economies of scale, they can afford to offer you much lower fees. Whereas retail first brokers like Momo start off with retail clients like you and I as their target client. So everything that they create will feel like it's more beginner friendly and also nicer to use. Basically, the learning curve is significantly lesser or less steep as compared to an institutional first broker. Keep this in mind because this, at its core, is the main difference separating both of these brokers. Now, if you put them side by side, it's a good thing to know that both of them are publicly listed in the US Nasdaq exchange, which means they are highly scrutinized and also regulated over their operations and financials. So that's always a comfort to know. Numbers-wise, Interactive Brokers has a market cap of almost 46 billion US dollar, which is almost five times of Momo's parent company's market cap at 9 billion US dollar as of the recording of this video. And if I were to put it into the context of Malaysian banks, that's like comparing the size of a Maybank to RHB Bank. Both are great banks, but obviously one is younger and much smaller. And next, I'll compare their regulations and licenses because this is one of the main deciding factor for most Malaysians. To begin with, Interactive Brokers is regulated and licensed in 11 different countries and that includes advanced nations like the United States, United Kingdom, UK, Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan and so on and so forth. Whereas on the other hand, Momo or Futu Holdings to be specific is regulated and licensed in 7 countries, rather similar ones like US, Singapore, Japan etc. But the main difference here is their license in Malaysia. And to put it clearer for you, Momo is regulated here and has a capital markets license by the Securities Commission Malaysia, which also means they are able to provide more localized support and services. But of course, that unfortunately comes at the cost of stringent regulation, which may limit them in terms of product rollout. If you ask me why, I can only assume it's because our regulators would need to consider the effects of ringgit currency outflow and also of course cybersecurity issues. So any foreign currency denominated products like money market funds or US treasury bonds or complex instruments like options trading all of those will need to go through a significantly longer review and also approval process before they can be eventually rolled out to Malaysians. Another aspect that differentiates them is the investor protection or in simpler terms, what insurance do you have in place or do they have in place should anything turn ugly for the stockbrokers themselves like bankruptcy, 
misuse of funds or something along those lines. One very infamous example of this is the fall of Bernie Madoff with the largest Ponzi scheme in history which happened back in 2008 and SIPC which is the insurance company in the US did step in to protect the customers of the brokerage firm and 6 years later in 2014 those customers finally recovered their money from the Ponzi scheme and yes these proceedings do take time because of the complicated investigation process involved in these complex financial crimes. Of course, it is not something that happens very often, but you sure wish that it's there at a point where you need them. So for Malaysians watching this video, which I presume most of you are, your new Interactive Brokers account will actually be parked under IBKI US or IBKI LLC. And that means your stocks and ETFs are insured by the SIPC on top of an additional insurance by Lloyds of London. For Mumu Malaysia, Malaysians are covered by the Capital Market Compensation CMC Fund governed under SC Malaysia for up to 100,000 ringgit on eligible Malaysian securities and related assets, which I presume should cover your US stocks, ETFs and US dollar cash as well. The next big thing that differentiates between these brokers is their financial markets coverage. To begin with, Interactive Brokers gives you access to 34 different countries and that includes the most coveted US stock market, the United Kingdom which houses the London Stock Exchange that provides you access to the island domicile ETFs that can help you to save a ton of dividend withholding tax. The Singapore Exchange which I know quite a bit of Malaysians are interested in their REITs the Chinese and Hong Kong stock market for the obvious access to Chinese stocks and ETFs, the Canadian stock market which houses some of the top, top financial and energy companies in the world, or the Indian stock market if you are keen to explore the manufacturing potentials over there, and just so many more markets out there that is more than what you ever need in a lifetime. And obviously, just one very unfortunate fact is, Interactive Brokers doesn't offer Busa Malaysia because they are not licensed by SC Malaysia. So some of you might find this a deal breaker which I totally understand. But personally, I couldn't care less because I don't invest in our local stock market. So if that is a huge deal to you, then this is where Mumu Malaysia comes in with their market offering, Busa Malaysia and the US stock market. But do be mindful that at the moment you are getting a nominee CDS Bursa account just like Rakuten Trade as opposed to a direct CDS account like M Plus Global. Which means you don't own the shares directly, you can't apply for IPO, no direct AGM invitation and sometimes there might be a little bit delay in receiving your dividends. Might be a deal breaker to some people but honestly it's not that big of a deal to be honest. And yes only two countries at the moment but I'm almost 100% sure that they are going to roll out more markets in the very near future just like their Singapore counterpart which offers US, Singapore, Hong Kong, China and many more. The only thing I can't tell you is when they are going to do that, whether it's a matter of next few weeks, months or sometimes even years. Because from my personal understanding of the local financial industry, if there are any delays, it's most likely on our regulator's side because companies like Mumu or Futu actually usually have their tax tech ready to be deployed in different countries of the region. So we'll just have to wait patiently before they get the necessary clearance to deploy those markets. And trust me when I say this, fintechs like them are more eager than all of us to roll out these products to gain more market share. The only limiting factor here again is really just the regulations. And of course, the same can be said for the financial products that they offer over here. At the moment, with Momo Malaysia, you can only trade stocks and ETS listed on the Bursa and US stock market. But such is not the case with Interactive Brokers because you have a plethora of financial products that you can choose from. Stocks, ETFs, options, futures, spot currencies, metals, bonds, US treasuries, and so many more. So needless to say, this also means Interactive Brokers can cater anyone from zero to total hero from the simplest stock investment that any beginner can start with to the most complex financial products that an advanced trader will ever need. So this is without a doubt the most complete set of financial offering that you will ever need from a broker. And before you ask, Zed, they all got fractional shares trading ah? Well, yes for interactive brokers, they do provide fractional shares trading. 
not just for US stocks and ETFs, but also for Canadian and also European markets as well. So yes, that also includes our favorite island domicile ETFs on the London Stock Exchange. As for Momo Malaysia, no, they do not offer fractional shares trading at the moment. And even if they do roll out this feature in the future, if you take Momo Singapore as a proxy, they are actually offering a limited version of that which only covers certain US stock and ETFs only and it needs to be done with market order. Still better than nothing but I think it's only fair for me to manage your expectations over here. And one thing that separates these stockbrokers from the conventional banks is their ability to hold multiple currencies within the same account with just a few clicks on your phone. And the best of all, it all comes at a very, very low fee. Take interactive brokers for example, they allow you to hold more than 27 different currencies. Basically, any major currencies that you can think of, they have it for you. As for Momo Malaysia, only Ringgit Malaysia and US dollar at the moment. But like I said earlier, this is bound to expand to more currencies in the future. If anything, just use their Singaporean counterpart as a reference. And in terms of their currency conversion spread, which means how much money you are losing to the conversion rate when you convert say from Ringgit Malaysia to US dollar. There are actually quite a few ways to fund interactive brokers from Malaysia. You can get away with a lower spread with WISE plus CMB Singapore funding method. But for most starters, the simplest and faster setup would be to fund it through WISE directly. And based on my personal experience, that will come at a slightly higher cost of around 0.6 to 0.8% blended average, which means fixed plus variable fee for each transaction. A rough example would be, let's say you find 10,000 ringgit from Malaysia to convert it into US dollar via WISE. You'll receive an equivalent of 9,920 ringgit in US dollar cash inside your interactive broker's account. And that 80 ringgit loss is the 0.8% fee that we are talking about. But be mindful that if you are converting currencies within the interactive broker's app itself, say you want to trade in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange or the Singaporean Stock Exchange, then each conversion will come at an additional fee of 2 US dollar. But to be fair, their conversion rates are usually very very close to the mid-market rates so your conversion losses will be very very minimal over there. As for Momo Malaysia, you would be glad to hear that their in-app conversion has a better conversion rate at around 0.4% based on two personal transactions myself one from my real life friend and a few more from our telegram community. We all average around 0.4% loss and yes, I'm as surprised as you are to find this out and to make it even better, the conversion does not involve fixed fee. Likewise, because your conversion loss is actually percentage based. So regardless if you convert 10,000 ringgit at one go or 1,000 ringgit for 10 times, the total conversion loss would add up to roughly the same amount in total. Of course, please comment down below if you experience it otherwise. Alright, let's enter the section that I believe most of you are most interested in. Their fees. And I'll start with the US stock market first. So, under Interactive Brokers tiered pricing plan, you will be charged a commission fee of about 35 US cents for each trade for less than 100 shares each time. Anything more than that will slowly scale up based on 0.35 cents per share which is still very very cheap all things considered. But such is not the case when we look at Momo Malaysia. They charge a flat 99 US cents of platform fee for each trade and that's almost already 3 times more than interactive brokers. And after the first 6 months of their launch, they will add another layer of commission fee at 0.03% of your trading value which will of course add up to more fees in total. So of course I've tabled this down to show you exactly how much you are paying in brokerage fee before other fees. If you trade anywhere from 500 to 10,000 US dollar worth of US stocks and ETFs for every single trade. And when you look at the column where you add the commission fee on top, there's actually quite a significant difference in their pricing. And another thing that you need to know is the stamp duty charged by the Malaysian government that comes at a cost of 1 ringgit for every 1,000 ringgit worth of trade that you execute. Meaning, if you trade 5,000 ringgit worth of stocks, you will need to pay an additional 5 ringgit just for stamp duty alone. So here we go with the next table. You can see that when you add the Malaysian stamp duty on top of their brokerage fee, 
that number just inflates so much more and this will definitely be a deal breaker for many people. But to be fair to them, this stamp duty is applicable to every single Malaysian stockbroker, banks as well. So it's not necessarily their problem. It's just something that our government chooses to tax on. And of course, apart from the brokerage and stamp duty, the other regulatory fees like SEC, FINRA, clearing and settlement fees, etc. Those are very small in nature, so I will not waste your time on that. Now, in terms of the fees for Busan Malaysia, as mentioned earlier, Interactive Brokers does not have access to the market. Momo, on the other hand, charges a flat platform fee of 3 ringgit per trade, and after the first 6 months, they will add another 0.03% per trade for their commission fee, which, in my opinion, is still very, 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 very cheap as compared to other Malaysian stockbrokers and even banks very comparable to the next cheapest local bank broker like Fin Huang which starts at 5 ringgit per trade. Account opening, both of them are more or less the same but it will not do you justice if I did not tell you that the process with interactive brokers is just a little bit more lengthy because they will ask for more information and documentation like proof of address, bank statements etc etc. But frankly, this is how you look at it right? It can be very tedious, yes, but it's also because they offer more financial markets. So it's only normal for them to ask you to fill up and sign up more stuff in order to comply with the respective markets regulations. As for Mumu Malaysia, you'll be glad to know that everything can be done easily within their mobile app. Personally, I find it very seamless and almost fail-proof for most beginners. But don't just take my words for it, comment down below and let us know how your account opening went. I'm sure others, especially new starters, would love to know that as well. Now, in terms of funding options, there are definitely more options available on interactive brokers. But more doesn't necessarily mean better and I've actually covered all of them in my past videos. But for most starters from Malaysia, like I said earlier, you would find it very very seamless to fund your interactive brokers account through WISE and your money would usually arrive within one business day very fast if you ask me. As for Moomoo Moo Malaysia, they are not any worse off either. In fact, they are better if you ask me because they are licensed by SC Malaysia and they have operations in Malaysia which means they will definitely have better Malaysian ringgit funding support for Malaysians. At the moment, they only support online bank transfer which is not instant yet usually takes less than one day to reach your account but I'm very sure in the future they will implement do it now or online FBX transfer just like how you would pay with the likes of Shopee or Lazada and when that happens, boys and girls, Momo Malaysia will win hands down in this department. So now it wouldn't be fair to their platform if you were to just focus on all the numbers on papers. I mean they are important, yes, but the truth is their platforms and apps are equally as important for your day-to-day -day usage and they can obviously make or break your deciding factor as well. With interactive brokers, they come with three mobile apps and three desktop platforms that cater for everyone ranging from complete beginners to expert traders. For most investors like myself, we would do just fine with their IBKR mobile app that covers most of the functions that you would ever need. But let's say if you want to do more research with more screen real estate, then their IBKR client portal will come in very handy for you. It's definitely not the sexiest trading platform out there, but if you fancy something nicer, they have recently just launched IBKR desktop, which is actually quite similar to the ones that Momo offers. Obviously not as robust and intuitive, but it's good to know that they are not snoozing on this department. As for Momo Malaysia, they have one mobile app and one desktop platform, but don't let that fool you because the quality of their platform are exceptional. In fact, I've said this in many of my past videos and I will say it again over here. Momo's trading platforms, be it on mobile or desktop, is the golden standard in terms of UI UX user experience. For something that is completely free to download, you'll be spoiled with all the features that they offer on the platform. I've covered them in detail before so feel free to check out my past videos over here. But just in case I'm not obvious enough, if you ask me to rate between these two platforms from the perspective of a long-term investor that does mostly fundamental analysis, I will give Interactive Brokers platforms 3.5 stars but 5 full very strong stars to Momo because it is smooth to use, packed with features, 
very intuitive in terms of user journey plus their social trading aspect in the form of Moo community just makes everything even more interactive for its users and this is where you can clearly tell that they are really a retail first broker that puts all of their effort into serving retail customers like you and I. Another aspect that is commonly taken for granted or just ignored by most people is the customer support provided by the brokers themselves. And since we are not talking about a local Malaysian broker over here, you need to know that Intragi Brokers is of course a US based company and Momo is technically a Chinese company. Why is this important? Well, language. Yes, Mumu Malaysia does have a lot more local customer support that are well versed with English, no doubt about that. But from my personal experience, most of their online chat agents are still based in China. And since English is not their first language, you would sometimes find it a little bit troublesome when it comes to certain complex questions. And that will not be a problem with interactive brokers. And again, from my own experience only, they have a much better understanding. Or should I say, they are better at explaining technical questions that could be a little bit too hard to explain. I mean, just try asking both of these brokers complex questions like dividend withholding tax or inheritance questions and I'm very sure you would know what I'm trying to say over here. But to be fair to them, this is not the worst thing and I'm nitpicking a little bit. I'm sure it will only get better over time when they have established enough local manpower. But until that happens, you will need to have a little bit more patience in this department. And in case you're wondering, yes, Mumu Malaysia actually has a physical branch in Kuala Lumpur. But I believe it's not a branch that anyone can just walk in yet. But at least some of you might just find comfort in that because Interactive Brokers is fully online. No physical branches here in Malaysia. Alright, time for my verdict, which is the better investment platform for Malaysians. Interactive Brokers or Momo Malaysia. Well, if you ask me that question today, I would boil it down to this very simple conclusion. If you just want to invest in the US stock market for now or you think the license by SC Malaysia is a huge deal breaker and you want a solid investment app and trading platform, easier and faster funding option in the future and you don't mind the relatively higher trading fees which is actually significantly lower than the likes of other local competitors then Momo Malaysia is the choice for you. But if you want a broker that has significantly more financial products, more financial markets coverage, significantly lower trading fees, has fractional shares trading and you don't mind that they are not licensed by SC Malaysia and have no physical branch over here then by all means, go for Interactive Brokers. And as you can see here, neither broker is perfect and you would have to make a decision based on your personal requirements. And I hope this video has given you enough information to make a better educated decision. If you ask me, which app will I invest more of my money with? Well, very simple, it's Interactive Brokers because of the lower trading fees. But which app will I open every single day to look at the stock market and maybe store my spare cash in their future money market funds? Hands down, it's the Momo Malaysia app. Alright, I hope this video helps. Do hit the like and subscribe button down below if you liked it. In the meantime, feel free to use my links down below to get started with investing. All the best.